When Elon Musk recently predicted that there would be a global recession, possibly a global depression, which would devastate the world's economy, I believe this is what he may have been referring to. Every current financial performance metric right now, software, production capacity, technology, the ability to produce, every single metric unfortunately is pointing to one conclusion, and that is this. Honda, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Mazda, Toyota, every major Japanese automaker is finished and will likely be bankrupt within 10 years, leading possibly to a global recession. Over the past six months, China has exported hundreds of thousands of electric cars all around the world. In fact, it's overtaken Japan as the largest exporter of automobiles worldwide. That trend is speeding up at a rapid pace. The Chinese have hundreds of thousands of cars, if not millions, waiting to be exported all around the world to buyers desperate for EVs. The Japanese car manufacturers, Nissan, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Honda, and Toyota, and Subaru, have shown very little interest in selling those people the kind of car that they actually want to buy. Sales results this year show that there is a devastating decline happening in China for legacy automakers. Tesla is in first place, the best-selling car. Second, BYD. Third, BYD. Fourth, BYD. Fifth, BYD. And sixth is GAC Aon. That's not the electric car sales charts. That's just China's automotive sales charts. If you look at the electric car sales charts, the top 25 best-selling electric cars, not a single one of them, is made by anyone other than Chinese automakers or Tesla. I just mentioned in another video that Honda's CEO said that its sales, particularly its electric car sales in China, would make or break the company. Well, now, Toyota have joined Honda and Nissan in car sales purgatory. When I say purgatory, I mean these guys, they're in trouble. I honestly feel genuinely very sorry for the Japanese population because Japan's economy is about to be decimated. Even Reuters now agrees with me. It's taken this long, but finally they've come to the party. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Toyota sales in China. They are down 20% year on year. Nissan's down 37%. Honda's down 38%. Now, keep in mind, sorry, my US friends, but this market, China, that's where more cars are sold from those brands than the US. So, China is the most important car market in the world for Toyota, Nissan, and Honda. I mean, Honda just publicly stated that in January of 2022, that China was its make or break. Well, I'd say we can officially say it's broken. In fact, these three companies are going to be in a state of terminal decline, and it's not quite as bad for Nissan and Honda, because at least they don't have the astronomical debts to deal with that Toyota does. But what happens to you, right? Toyota selling 10 million cars per year now, well, they won't be this at the end of this year, but they did last year, 10 million cars. And they've got to service 190 billion US dollars in debt. And you might be thinking, well, you know, that's probably not so bad. I mean, Volkswagen Group, about that much debt too, but it's a big difference. The reason is this. Looking at the debt from a company like Ford, and Volkswagen, and then looking at the company from the debt from a company like Toyota, you probably think, well, they've all got a lot of debt. You know, this is a big problem for all of them. Well, not quite the case, my friends. Now, if if car buyers and company car buyers default on their loans, then yes, you would be correct because 50% of Ford's debt are loans. Loans, it's financial services debt. Nearly 50% of Volkswagen Group's debt are, is financial services debt. I mean. To be honest, they've still got 187 billion in debt. So, you know, that doesn't really solve the problem for them, but it still means they're not in anywhere near as bad a position as Toyota, who only have 8% financial services debt. So 92% of Toyota's debt is just simply bad debt. And it's worse than bad. 
it's actually worse debt than any other automaker. The reason being this, 0.2% of Toyota sales last year were electric cars, meaning Toyota has no assets, none. Okay, it's got some land. It's got some factories that maybe it can repurpose, um, but you saw how that's gone for Tesla with the Fremont factory. Not that well, right? Yeah, they've made the best of it, but it's not that good. What often happens is companies will simply demolish a factory because it doesn't necessarily fit and suit their needs. Now, would that mean that Toyota's assets are worth nothing? No, but they're worth less than everyone else because everyone else sells a higher percentage of EVs than Toyota does, significantly higher. I mean, 0.2% is a long way behind the 6.5% of the Volkswagen Group or a long way behind the 12% of the Mercedes Group. Mercedes have a hell of a lot of debt too, but at least some of that has been invested into making EVs using the production facilities, right? The technology Mercedes have, have come up with, which is actually some of it's pretty damn good. If you watch some of my videos, I talk about that. But what does Toyota have? They have admitted they have jack diddly squat. Jack diddly squat, they have nothing. <laughs> they don't have an electric car platform. They've admitted that their only EV they have a couple of EVs in China, but they're not even made by Toyota. They're made by BYD. They're basically just rebadged BYDs. They have admitted, right, that their EV that they have, the only one they have is made on a non-EV production line. And it's expensive to manufacture. And it's inefficient. What kind of an asset is that? They don't have a single electric car production line anywhere in the world and then they went along and it took them until December of last year to finally decide, maybe we should see what the Tesla hype's all about. They go and buy a Tesla Model Y, the engineers take it apart and they call it genius. That is the company with more debt than any other company in the history of mankind. And you're telling me that their sales from last year mean they're going to be okay in five years time from now. That's what I'm still hearing from a lot of people. Well, Reuters are now finally realizing that yes, China is important and yes, these Japanese automakers are about to be decimated in China and they're not about to be. It's happening today, right now. Japan's automakers are facing a sales crisis in China. Data shows as a rapid shift to electric vehicles has upended the world's largest auto market and led to a plunge in purchases of gasoline powered cars. There's literally about 4 million cars sitting in China's dealerships, parking lots, gathering dust because while well, a combination of people don't want them and many of them don't meet emission sales targets. So here's the way to explain this. In Beijing and Shanghai, the two most popular cities in China and in other cities in China, it's extremely difficult to buy a gasoline powered car. It's easy to walk into a factory it's, I mean, it's easy to walk into one of these dust lots and buy one for peanuts, right? It's, it takes no effort. You can go buy a Honda for nothing. You can go buy one 50% discount for a BMW, 50% discount for a Honda. They're selling them for peanuts. But the hard part is this, actually registering the car. It's insanely difficult unless it's an EV. If it's an EV, it's still not easy, but it's way, way easier and much, much cheaper. If it's a gasoline powered car, well, it's an entirely different, I've got to make a, a full video explaining the complexity and difficulty of simply registering a gasoline powered car in China. So do you think the Chinese government maybe are doing this intentionally? Well, one, they want to decrease smog. They know it's causing them massive health problems in China. Two, they've told these idiots, these idiotic automakers, that includes GM, that includes Ford, that includes Volkswagen Group, that includes all legacy automakers, They've told them for years what the rules would be, and they just decided not to comply. It's that simple. Now, what's happening? This is not just choice. People aren't just saying, I don't want to buy a Toyota. I don't want to buy a Honda. I don't want to buy a Nissan. Basically, they're saying, I can't. If I do, I can't register the damn thing. So it's a combination of those two. Plus, why would you buy, you know, why would you buy an old gasoline powered vehicle? Yeah, everyone says, okay, Toyotas, they work on the car. It might have old technology, but at least it lasts a long time. The Chinese are like, yeah, we're sick of that. We want a new product. We don't want something that you, you designed back in 1993, and now you've got a, a, 
a new iteration of that vehicle where you've just changed the bumpers and you've made it look different, but it still uses the same engine, basically the same engine from 20 years ago. That's not really what we want. We want a digital experience. We want, you know, a nice interior. We want an electric vehicle. Total sales of Japanese auto brands in China are down 32% year on year in the first quarter. That's more than double the pace of the overall market contraction industry data from Reuters analyzed. So this gives you some some context on the media's garbage about Tesla's doom in China. I mean, Tesla sales have increased, not a lot, but they've increased in China in the first quarter of this year versus last year. And the entire market is contracting. Japanese automakers are being decimated and they're focusing on Tesla only increasing sales a little bit. Is that reasonable? While other automakers like Volkswagen have also been caught out by the sharp shift in China, Japanese automakers stand out because of their limited showing in the fast growing category of EVs and plug-in hybrids. Production and margins come under pressure in China as automakers have cut output and prices of gasoline powered cars. In other words, they've slashed prices of gasoline powered cars. They're discounting them by ludicrous amounts of money. It's a pity that we can't just import them for all from China and just get all these bargains. It'd be great. Anyhow, They've slashed the prices to try to stem the bleeding, analysts say. But, you know, here's the real thing. Here's the big problem. Their sales are down 32% as a whole. But obviously, the three automakers I mentioned, they're all doing worse than that. But their sales are down by that much, even when they're selling their cars at a loss. A loss. All of them are. Everyone knows this common knowledge that they're selling their cars way below what it costs to manufacture them. And... Their factories are running at a loss because when you run a factory at 50% production output, you lose money on it. It's a universal rule for almost any product, any kind of production. And that's what they're doing now. So their factories are running at a loss and they're selling their cars way below what it costs to manufacture them. And their sales are down by 30, 36, 37%. This is the perfect storm. This is the picture perfect storm right now it's like a twister tearing through oklahoma and just laying waste and people can't see this because it's just not it's not hitting them it's not obvious to them analysts say this is a very worrying sign of the competition the japanese automakers are increasingly facing outside of their home market especially japanese automakers face a little bit more inventory of new cars in china said yasushi matsui chief financial officer as at parts supplier Denso Corporation last week. They are making adjustments. He's being very nice here because these guys are supplying parts to these Japanese companies. Mitsubishi Motors said last week it had suspended production of its Outland SUV in China for three months and would take a charge of 77 million for slowing sales at its joint venture with state-owned GAC. Isn't this ironic? The, the crazy part here, Mitsubishi are Clearly, no one's buying Mitsubishis, right? But the joint venture partner here is GAC. GAC's own car company called Aon. It's their electric car company. And they make EVs, by the way, for other legacy automakers. Their sales are skyrocketing absolutely through the roof. I mean, they delivered more than 40,000 EVs last month and more than 40,000 EVs the month before that in China meaning they're the third biggest electric car manufacturer in China right now. And then their other joint venture partner is suspending production and taking a hit on a model of 77 million US dollars. Mitsubishi, like some other Japanese automakers, does not break out China sales figures. Industry data analyzed by Reuters showed its first quarter sales fell by 60%. So we've, so, we've talked about Honda, right? Their sales down 37%. Nissan down about the same. Toyota, obviously, in big trouble. And Toyota, I also haven't mentioned. The other problem with Toyota, they've slashed the price of their EVs. It's so cheap. It's cheaper than almost all their competitors. The BZ4X, right? $20,000 at some dealerships. Some of them are selling them for twenty-four. dollars Some are selling them for as low as $20,000. That is that is ludicrous. The BZ3, their brand new Corolla-like EV, bigger than a bigger than a Tesla Model 3, $23,000. They bring it out, they renounce the price, they discount the price before it's even released. So Mitsubishi, 58%. Now, the problem here for Mitsubishi is they only sell about a million cars a year. 
if they lose China, uh, what are they? What are they going to do? Just sell a couple of cars to Australians who love Mitsubishi? Yeah, that's not going to work. In another shift, the Nissan Silphi, a sedan that had been China's top selling vehicle for three years, it's a piece of junk by the way, I don't know why people buy it, was edged out last year by the BYD Song, a plug-in hybrid made by BYD. And now Tesla has even outsold it. In emailed comments, Nissan said it had sold over 5 million Silphies in China, over 5 million Silphies in China since the model was released, adding that an electric drive hybrid version was eligible for incentives in Guangzhou, a hybrid version. Mm. Reuters says Japan is the biggest loser here. And I've been saying this for months and months and months. I've been sent emails abusing me, saying you've got no idea what you're talking about. You don't understand. Toyota's wonderful. Then my, I'm married to Toyota and we, we had, a, we had a, a wedding and um, I've got a ring on my finger that says I love Toyota and they're saying that don't say anything bad. You know, you're criticizing the Japanese people. It's not about the Japanese people. I feel sorry for the Japanese people. It's not their fault that the CEOs of these companies are mental. It's not their fault that the CEO of Toyota, who basically owns the entire Japanese automotive industry, is the president of the automotive industry in Japan, still is today, has made these decisions for these companies and just ruined them. That's essentially what he's done. Toyota Motor Corporation has said its go slow approach to all electric cars protects consumer choice. Protects consumer choice by going slow, giving them no options, right? I mean, in Australia here, they're protecting our choice by giving us no EVs to buy. Is that what their argument is? Reuters says the strategy is costing them sales in China. Japan is the biggest loser of the price war so far, said Bill Rousseau, founder and CEO of Automobility, a Shanghai-based consultancy. As EVs get more affordable, they become more attractive to the core buyers who have been resisting so far, the buyers of foreign brands. So you can see the writing is on the wall. Japan's share of car sales in China slumped to 18% in the fourth quarter, down from 25% in 2020. But it's not just those numbers, it's the trajectory of those numbers. It's the future projections of those numbers. Japan, these Japanese automakers don't have any compelling EVs. They don't have a pipeline of affordable compelling EVs. They're not gonna be able to pull them out of thin air. There's just nothing that they can do. Toyota said its luxury brand Lexus posted a 15% decline in first quarter sales as well. So it's not just Toyota here, it's also Lexus. We need to increase our speed and efforts to firmly meet the customer expectations in the Chinese market, said Toyota CEO Koji Sato. But like I said, Toyota don't even have an EV only platform. The companies that do, they're basically selling their car to Toyota. Toyota sticks a badge on it, puts a few badges here and there, maybe changes the things, maybe puts in a steering wheel and then resells it. How long can you do that? and actually make money. I mean, they're clearly not making money, but what sort of strategy is that? To just buy Chinese cars and rebrand them? I don't see how that, how that can work for them. Nissan posted a 46% drop in sales in China. 46%. Mazda down 67% in the first quarter. 67%. Now I've made videos on this channel saying Mazda are screwed. I, I gotta say, I feel a certain sense of satisfaction here. Not because I've seen the demise of Mazda, even though they have fought the EV paradigm as well, they have fought against it. But just because so many people said that this was wrong, but it was simply following the facts. 67%, holy smokes. I mean, Mazda's also a very small company as well, similar size to Mitsubishi. And they have no plans for EVs in the US either. Plug-in hybrids or hybrids or something or other in, the, in a few years time. But until then, what happens? How do they pay their bills? How do they pay their staff? I don't understand. Honda chief executive Toshihiro Meeb acknowledged after, after stating that Honda had lost 38% in sales in the first quarter this year, that the automaker lagged Chinese rivals in some software technologies. China's automakers are further ahead of us than we expected, Meeb told reporters at a presentation in Tokyo focused on Honda's efforts in autonomous driving and services like gaming. Analysts are now saying that Japanese automakers will soon face a similar struggle in the United States. It's inevitable, it will come. And the other thing that's inevitable is the demise of the Japanese economy. Some people believe the Japanese economy 
the Japanese GDP is about 80% dependent on the automotive industry. Now, I'm not sure if that's true, but I do know that the automotive industry takes up a higher percentage of Japan's GDP than any other country in the world. And not only any other country in the world, any other country in the history of mankind. There's never been another country that's ever been as reliant on one sector as what the Japanese are. You can see my point here. Japan has been in a state of denial about EVs. And unfortunately, it means soon they will lose the automotive industry. Thank you for watching.